Europe. Last month, NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Glenn Greenwald and other privacy activists launched a new campaign to establish global privacy standards. The proposed International Treaty on the Right to Privacy, Protection Against Improper Surveillance and Protection of Whistleblowers would require states to ban mass data collection and implement public oversight of national security programs. It would also require states to offer asylum to whistleblowers. It's been dubbed the, quote, Snowden Treaty. Snowden spoke about the need for the treaty via teleconference from Russia at the September launch. This is not a problem exclusive to the United States or the National Security Agency or the FBI or the Department of Justice or any agency of government anywhere. This is a global problem that affects all of us. That's Edward Snowden. What do you think has to happen around mass surveillance? Well, we we have a very negative trend now in Europe, where a number of countries are moving from uh, targeted surveillance to untargeted surveillance. And this is quite dangerous. This means that everybody is a suspect. Um, what we need is we need strict rules on uh, uh, authorization of surveillance measures. Uh, we need to outlaw certain the use of certain technologies, which catch a uh, which uh, cast a very wide net uh, and grab communications of everybody in an area, everybody communicating with a, a certain uh, person who might be a, uh, suspected of, of terrorist activities. But we need to beef up democratic oversight of security services. We need intrusive uh, parliamentary committees. We need judicial authorization. Uh, we need. Uh, we need to be assured that the security services aren't doing what they can, but that they are operating with, uh, within the framework of the rule of law. And we need to provide remedies, effective remedies, to those who have been d done wrong, who have been unjustly surveyed and had their privacy uh, invaded. Who would be the police on this? Uh, in, there are various models in Europe, uh, but very often, to make it democratic, it has to be parliamentary, uh, parliamentarian as well. You need members of parliament engaged uh, and keeping an eye on the executive, keeping an eye on the security services. Very often, uh, you have expert panels assisting parliaments, people who have the technical expertise to know what, uh, what they're being shown by the security services. Uh, and. I think it's completely legitimate to give money to security services, to give them technolo technological know-how. But we need to do the same to the overseers, so that they can really see uh, and understand what's going on and keep an eye on it. it go ahead. Very, very often, these overseers are rubber, uh, they, they, they rubber stamp requests for surveillance. They don't really go into the, to the meat of it. When I was a I asked in Germany, for example, uh, the, the people in, in, in involved with authorizing uh, surveillance requests, they said 98 to 99 percent of all requests are granted. To me, this shows that the system is not effective. Is Edward Sna Snowden a patriot or a traitor, do you believe? Um, I think uh, I will be agnostic on that question, but I think that he revealed a serious human rights issue, which until then had not been known. And some of the issue, some of the the solutions that he is proposing, um, I think, are very much in line with what we have been uh, advocating. Finally, a ceasefire agreed uh, in the east of Ukraine has been agreed between the separatists and Ukrainian government forces um, has been holding, but fears remain that fighting could resume. On Thursday, Russian President Vladimir Putin said Kiev was not upholding its end of the Ukraine peace deal. It is useless to endlessly blame Russia for not fulfilling or not urging the authorities of unrecognized republics in the southeast of Ukraine to do something in fulfillment of the Minsk agreements if the key positions of the Minsk agreements are not fulfilled by the Kiev authorities, and they are not fulfilled by the Kiev authorities. That is Putin of Russia, Niels Moizhnyak. Uh, what You've been spending a lot of your time on Ukraine. What should we understand about it? Ukraine is a human rights disaster zone. Uh, Crimea has been annexed. The uh, human rights situation there has deteriorated very seriously in the last year. Uh, the east of the country, which is held by the rebels, supported by Russia. Uh, I was in Donetsk, in rebel-occupied Donetsk, in, in July. Uh, there are very serious uh, human rights issues there, but the humanitarian situation there is also catastrophic. You have a lot of people who have been displaced. You have a lot of people who are going hungry, who don't have access to clean water, uh, to medicine. Uh, you have allegations of enforced disappearances, uh, arbitrary detention, torture. Um, and uh, the West. Uh, needs to support Ukraine, but it also needs to hold it to account for its 
human rights violations, because it also uh, has not done everything it, ca it can. And, and sometimes there are some, uh, there are some uh, military groupings which are also in involved in or implicated in human rights violations. We're going to have to leave it there, but of course we'll continue to follow all of these issues. Niels Moisnieks is the Council of Europe Commissioner for Human Rights. And that does it for our show, though this news just in. Democratic presidential candidate Lincoln Chafee has dropped out of the race for the Democratic Party nomination for president. Chafee's a Republican turned independent turned Democratic, former governor and senator of Rhode Island.